Hare Krishna. We continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, Chapter 4, Transcendental Knowledge, Text 12. Kankshantaha karma nam siddhim yajanta iha devataha shipram hi manu loke siddhir bhavati karma ja. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shla Prabhupada. Men in this world desire success in fruitive activities and therefore they worship the demigods. Quickly, of course, men get results from fruitive work in this world. There is a great misconception about the gods or demigods of this material world and men of less intelligence, although passing as great scholars, take these demigods to be various forms of the Supreme Lord. Actually, the demigods are not different forms of God, but they are God's different parts and parcels. God is one, and the parts and parcels are many. So the position of the demigods is being explained to us. There are many demigods. There are 33 crore demigods. 33 crore demigods. Why do we have so, so many demigods? They are not all God. They are not one. It doesn't mean that uh, the position of Lord Krishna, Lord Ganesh, Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, Durga Devi is all one. No, no. The position of Lord Krishna is that he's the Supreme Lord and all the demigods are his parts and parcels. We can understand that in a country, the head of the country is the president and the president has so many different ministers to manage the different departments. To, to run the country. So someone will be a minister of finance, someone will be minister of education, someone will be a minister of um, agriculture, someone will be minister of defense. Similarly, the demigods are given different departments. Surya Dev, the son of the, he's in charge of the sun, then Varuna Dev is in charge of the water, you know, like that. Krishna has given all these demigods different uh, managerial posts in the ad administration of the universe. So who are they then? They are also living entities. They are living entities like us, but they have qualified themselves to be, uh, to be, put in that post. For example, no one who does not have a qualification can apply, you know, as a post of an engineer to run a great engineering project. You know, you, you need that certain qualification to be able to do that. So similarly, the, the demigods are chosen by Krishna because they have the qualification to, to be, uh, in that post, in that position. So the Vedas say, Nityo Nityanam, God is one, Ishwara Parma Krishna. The Supreme God is one, Krishna. Ishwara Parma Krishna. The Supreme God is one, Krishna. And the demigods are delegated with powers to manage this material world. These demigods are all living entities, Nityanam with different grades of material power. They cannot be equal to the Supreme God, Narayan, Vishnu, or Krishna. Anyone who thinks that God and the demigods are on the same level is called an atheist or Pasandi. Even the great demigods like Brahma and Shiva cannot be compared to the Supreme Lord. In fact, the Lord is worshiped by demigods such as Brahma and Shiva, Shiva Vrinchi Nutam. So even the great demigods, Lord Brahma and Lord Sh uh, Shiva are great demigods. Uh, Lord Shiva is the leader of the demigods. He's called Maheshwar. You know, he's the leader of the demigods. But yet, yet he can't be compared to the Supreme Lord Krishna. Brahmaji, he is the 
the secondary creator of the universe, yet he cannot be compared to the Supreme Lord Krishna. The Supreme Lord is the Lord. No one is equal to him. No one is greater than him. God is one. And then all the demigods are his parts and parcels. They have been given certain powers, certain responsibilities by God to run this universe, universal affairs. Yet, and even the, the demigods worship Lord Krishna. We see Lord Shiva is always meditating on, on the Lord Sankarshan. He's always in meditation. Why? He's meditating to get the favor of the Lord. Brahmaji in Brahma Samhita, he keeps saying, Govindam Adi Purusham Tam Aham Bajami. So even the demigods are always worshipping Krishna. Yet, curiously enough, there are many human leaders who are worshipped by foolish men under the misunderstanding of anthropomorphism or zoomorphism. Iha Devata denotes a powerful man or demigod of this material world. So anthropomorphism or zoomorphism, thinking that, uh, that we are giving God a form like a human being because we have a human being. So we need to worship God in that form. But that's not the truth. It's because God has a form like that and he has made us in his image. You know, or zoomorphism. Because Krishna, he appears, he appears in different species. So like Lord Varahadev or Matsya Avatar or Kurma Avatar. It's the Lord who has that original form. Not that we are just thinking, oh, because there are these animals who have these forms. So let us just worship anyone as God. No, no. So Iha Devata denotes a powerful man or demigod of this material world. But Narayana, Vishnu or Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead does not belong to this world. He is above or transcendental to material creation. The Supreme Lord is transcendental to this material world. Even Sripad Sankracharya, the leader of the impersonalist, maintains that Narayan or Krishna is beyond this material creation. The Supreme Lord he does not belong to this material world. He creates this material world, but he is transcendental. However, foolish people, Krita Gyan, worship the demigods because they want immediate results. They get the results, but do not know that results so obtained are temporary and are meant for less intelligent persons. The, the intelligent person is in Krishna consciousness and he has no need to worship the paltry demigods for some immediate temporary benefit. The demigods of this material world as well as their worshippers will vanish with the annihilation of this material world. The boons of the demigods are temporary, are material and temporary. So Krishna is saying, you have material desires, but you don't go to the demigods for fulfillment of this material desires. Because what will happen is, first of all, the powers that the demigods have is also given by me. So by going to the demigods, it's like you're bribing the government officers, you know. You're bribing the officers. Rather, you go to the in charge, the head himself, and you say, my dear sir, this is my request, instead of giving bribes. So in doing so, the demigods are also not happy when we are approaching them for some material benefit. They are not happy to give that to us. They are devotees of the Lord, and they want us also to become devotees of the Lord. And then another consideration is that the benefits that we get that the demigods give us, those benefits are temporary. They are material. So they will keep us in this material world. They're not going to help us come out of this material world. They're not going to help us to be situated on our true platform, our true original identity. They will, in fact, 
um, further entangle us in thinking that we are the body because we will continue to remain in this material world. So then, um, and, and then what happens is the results that the demigods give us, when this material world is annihilated, those results will be annihilated. The demigods themselves also, we also, of course the creation keeps happening. The, we souls never die, but then whatever body we have, we give it up, we take up another body, you know. So the results are temporary. Results are temporary. That's what's the point here. The boons of the demigods are material and temporary. Both the material worlds and their inhabitants, including the demigods and their worshippers, are bubbles in the cosmic ocean. So it's like bubbles. You know, there are so many bubbles keep coming and going away, coming and going away. And so we are thinking, oh, what I'm getting is like the real thing, but it's just, just for a temporary, for a very short time, very short time. In this world, however, human society is mad after temporary things, such as the material opulence of possessing land, family, and enjoyable paraphernalia. To achieve such temporary things, people worship the demigods or powerful men in society, if a man gets some ministership in the government by worshipping a political leader, he considers that he has achieved a great boon. All of them are therefore co-towing to the so-called leaders or big guns in order to achieve temporary boons, and they indeed achieve such things. Such foolish men are not interested in Krishna consciousness for the permanent solution to the hardships of material existence. So what is it being said is that we are so, we want all the temporary things. Now what are things are temporary? The material opulence, we want to have land, we want to have good family, we want to have a good position, we want to have things we can enjoy with. And so that shouldn't we want this? I mean, we want to enjoy, we can't be suffering, we don't want to be tortured. So what is the proposal? But the idea is that to achieve such temporary things, we, we put all our time, energy, and endeavor in it. And we are going to any extent to be able to get these things for our enjoyment. We are willing to take great, great physical endeavors to achieve these things or to if we know someone in power, we are willing to do anything to get this favor from them, or we are do, willing to do anything to worship to the demigods to get this favor. So what the idea is to understand that all these things are temporary. Sure, we need them. It's not that we can artificially say, okay, I don't want them. I'm not attached to, I, I don't need these. No, sure, okay, we need it. We need it, but that's how we should understand. Yes, this is for me to maintain my body. I can't do, put all my time and energy into this. Yeah, sure, I need it. It's for the maintenance of my body, but with the understanding that this is temporary and I also need to understand who I truly am, that I am the soul. And so what do I need to do for that? I need to hear and chant. So that is what is the proposal, not get too, ju just too possessed by trying to accumulate as much material things as possible, too possessed that at any cost, I need to enjoy myself. Yeah, so that, that is the proposal. Um, because after all, we are not the body. And if we continue to think we are the body, we continue to act as on the body, then we'll continue to keep taking future births in this material world. So such foolish men are not interested in Krishna consciousness for the permanent solution to the hardships of material existence. They are all after sense enjoyment and to get a little facility for sense enjoyment they are attracted to worshipping empowered living entities known as demigods. Uh, 
This verse indicates that people are rarely interested in Krishna consciousness. They are mostly interested in material enjoyment and therefore they worship some powerful living entity. So the majority, most of us, we are not looking to make a permanent solution to understand who am I truly? Why am I suffering? I don't wanna suffer. I don't wanna get old. I don't wanna get disease. I don't wanna die. How do I stop all this? We are not looking into that. We are just looking, oh, how can I be, um, get more and more things so I can enjoy more and more. But the proposal is that uh, it's not of a permanent situation to be in this body. Of a permanent situation is in the spiritual world that we are spirit souls, hmm? that we are eternal and that we need to revive our Krishna consciousness. That, uh, and that we can do by hearing and chanting. It begins by hearing and chanting. Hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita and chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening in and joining in. And we'll stop here for today. Shumad Bhagavad Gita Kiche, Shla Prabhupada Kiche, Gaur Premnande, Hari Bol, Hare Krishna.